Afternoon. Here is the news at four. First, the highlights. Lagos State Government concludes plans to inaugurate first phase of Red Line Rail project in February. Federal Government partners next in bank on mining sector financing. On the foreign scene, United Nations confirms 12 deaths in facility sheltering civilians as war rages in Gaza. And in sports, Nigeria Power Volleyball Federation declares readiness to win slots ahead Paris 2024 Paralympics Games qualifiers. And now the details, I am Akan Usen. The state government has concluded plans to inaugurate the first phase of the 37-kilometer red line rail project from Agbado to Oyibo in February. Also, before the end of February, 12 additional ferries are expected to be launched to complement existing ones on the waterways to enhance the integrated intermodal transport system of the Babajide Songwolu administration. While work will commence, on the construction of the fourth mainland bridge in the first quarter of this year. Governor Songwulu, who stated this in his address at the People's Town Hall meeting held in Ikeja, said in line with the Themes Plus developmental agenda, his administration will intensify more efforts to bring more dividends of democracy to residents in areas of transportation, health and environment, energy, education, agriculture, entertainment, Tourism and arts, among all others. We deliver on our integrated urban mass transportation system. And today, over 4 million Lagosians are carrying two power cars and they are committed from different parts of the city to be able to continue to enjoy the services that we are currently in. It's also the era of renewable energy and also the era of EVs. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Binga Omotosho, who described Governor Songwulu's governance style as unique and effective, noted that the town hall meeting is designed for his administration to render accounts, assured residents that despite the challenges, the ship of the state remains steady because it is in the hands of a tested captain. Stakeholders at the event during an interactive session commended the Songwulu administration for his developmental strides but urged him to do more on road construction in rural areas, declare war on drug abuse through the youth centers and relevant agencies, and build more affordable houses in the Dagri area to decongest Lagos Island. On his part, Governor Babajide Songwulu, who assured that development will come to the Badagri area, including the Blue Rail Line to Okokomaiko, hinted that the Badagri Seaport project is on course and will be actualized. While also answering questions, Deputy Governor of Bafemi Hamzat hinted that the Ijebode Shagam Road project has been awarded by the federal government and contractors will move to site soonest. Our correspondent Adiola Kindele quotes the governor at the event quotes the governor at the event attended by different stakeholders, including traditional rulers, party faithful, top government functionaries, as appealing to all residents to pay their taxes promptly to assist the government in delivering more developmental projects. The Lagos State Government says there is no going back on the total ban of usage and distribution of styrofoam 
in the state. Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tokumbo Wahab, maintained the state's stands at a consultative meeting of the state with representatives of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, and Restaurant and Food Services Proprietors Association of Nigeria, Ref Span, at Alausa. Wahab said enough damage has been done already to the health of the people and the state of the environment. He said the only moratorium which the state is willing to offer all producers and distributors of styrofoam is to delay commencement of enforcement of the ban by three weeks. The Legacy Domestic and Sector agency DSVA has continued its community advocacy in the Ikorodo division of the state by engaging artisans and CDC slash CDA members. The program with over 150 participants in attendance was organized in partnership with the Lagos State Ministry of Wealth Creation as well as the chairman of all of the local government areas. The Executive Secretary of DSVA, Titi Lala Vaivo Adeni, who was represented by the Head of Community Engagement Unit, Damilare Adeusi, encouraged participants to actively play their role in preventing and responding to incidents of sexual and gender-based violence that occur in their communities as they are major stakeholders in the society. Vaivo Adeni assured them that the state government remains unrelenting in the zero-tolerance stance against all forms of SGBV. And now to the rest of the stories. The Ministry of Solid Minerals Development and the Nigerian Export-Import Bank are set to partner in a bid to resolve the hurdles of exporting solid minerals and to leverage the bank's resources to boost mining sector financing. The special assistant to the Minister of Media, Shebu Tomori, made this known in a statement made available to journalists in Abuja. Receiving the Nexon Bank Managing Director, Abba Bello, in his office, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Delia Lucky, lauded the bank for deploying its financial tools to assist the mining industry in meeting some of its critical needs of equipment and funding while soliciting for more to be done. Briefing the Minister on Nexon Bank's mining support scheme, Bello stressed that it is conceptualized to support local mining companies access to capital to develop critical minerals, provide credit enhancement instruments to de-risk projects, facilitate and attract investments to enable mining projects to optimize the contribution of the mining sector to the nation's gross domestic product and exports. Alake expressed satisfaction with the bank's commitment to the development of the mining sector, pledging the ministry's collaboration to leverage the bank's resources for the benefit of the mining industry. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, has issued a warning to the public about the sale of counterfeit full cream milk powder across states in Nigeria. According to NAFDAQ, investigations by the product enterprise company discovered that the counterfeited products were displayed openly in the market. NAFDAQ journal directors and state coordinators have been directed to conduct surveillance and mop up the counterfeited products across the state in Nigeria. The agency also encouraged members of the public to report any suspicion of distribution and sale of the counterfeit or unwholesome packaged food products to the nearest NAFDAQ office, NAFDAQ on. 0800-162-3322 or via email sf.alert at navdac.gov.ng. And now to foreign news. The UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, says at least 12 people were killed and 75 injured when a UN facility sheltering civilians was struck in Khan Yunus in southern Gaza. UNRWA said two tank shells hit its Khan Yunus training center, which is one of the largest shelters with between 30,000 and 40,000 people living inside its grounds. Its commissioner, Thomas White, condemned the blatant disregard of basic rules of war. Israel's military said it had ruled out that the incident was a result of an air or artillery strike by its forces. 
He added that it was reviewing Israeli operations nearby and examining the possibility that it was Hamas fire. And now sports. The Nandra Park Volleyball Federation NPVF says its men and women teams are prepared to sweep the slots of the forthcoming Paris 2024 Paralympic Games qualifiers beginning on January 29, 2024 at the Molade Okoya Thomas Indoor Sports Hall of the Teslim Balugu Stadium. The event to be hosted by the Federation welcomes teams from Egypt, Morocco, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Algeria and Libya all vying for a chance to participate in the Paralympic Games in Paris. Speaking ahead of the qualifiers, NPVF President Coyote Ladili said the Federation engaged a foreign coach who spent a month with players and selected coaches to prepare them for the event. In the men's qualifiers, Nigeria, Egypt, Morocco and Kenya are in Group A, while the women's team will face competition from Kenya, Rwanda and Zimbabwe. The Nigerian men's team will get their campaign underway with a game against Kenya and the women will meet it's in that way. And that's all for the news at four. Just before we go, maintain adequate distance from the vehicle ahead of you to avoid collision. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms on X, formerly Twitter, Lagos Traffic 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe and watch us live on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Did you know that the Sanwulu administration introduced the Lagos Economic Acceleration Program, LEAP, to reduce the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on small businesses? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government has concluded plans to inaugurate the first phase of the 37-kilometer red line rail project from Ambado to Yubo in February. The Ministry of Solid Minerals Development and the Nigerian Export Import Bank are set to partner in a bid to resolve the hurdles of exporting solid minerals and to leverage the bank's resources to boost mining sector financing. We also told you that the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, said at least 12 people were killed and 75 injured when a UN facility sheltering civilians was struck in Khan Yunis in southern Gaza. And in sports, the Nigeria Para Volleyball Federation NPVF said its men and women's team are prepared to sweep the slots at the forthcoming Paris 2024 Paralympic Games qualifiers beginning on January 29, 2024 at the Molade Okoya Thomas Indoor Sports Hall of the Teslim Balogo Stadium. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to Lagos Traffic Radio at lagostate.gov.ng and that ends the news broadcast compiled by Kyle De Mafolashiri. I am Akan Usen. Thanks for listening and please stay safe. Good afternoon.